The new deposits and the new mining tool introduced in patch 3.3 has made mining even better than it already was. And today we're going to start the first episode in the Advanced Miner's Guide. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. This is the first video in a three or four video series, not exactly sure yet, um, where we're going to go over everything you need to know about mining. In this first video, we are going to be talking about the ships and the equipment, what you need to look out for when selecting what ship you're going to use for mining, and what equipment you will need depending on what type of mining you want to do. Then next video, we're going to talk about locations, where do you, how do you find a good spot, again, depending on what you're looking for. Um, and then in the final video, that's going to, or the final maybe one or two videos, it's going to be um, tips and tricks to what you can do, how the tools actually work, how you do mining most efficiently to get the highest possible profit out of it. As I see it right now, there are two ways you can go about mining. One, you can go core hunting, as I call it, where you go out and you look for mother loads, and you take those and you purely look for mother loads. The materials you get out of mother loads are very, very um, pricey, so you get a lot of credits for it. Um, but of course, you will not be collecting as many credits and many um, uh, fragments per hour. But overall, core hunting is the most profitable way. And you can make, I would say, easily 20 million. Um, I've been able to push close to 25, and with a few more optimizations, um, I think I can push it up to around 30 million every hour running cores. The other way is the more traditional, go out, prospect a rock, mine the materials off it, and if you come across any surface, subsurface, or even core deposits, you would collect those as well, but that's going to be secondary for you. Second method is not as profitable. You could maybe make, if you're, luck, if you're good, 10 million per hour, I would say. But again, it's a lot more relaxed. This, the player skill cap is a lot lower as well. So those are kind of the two, uh, the two main methods, and we're going to talk about both today. So before we begin to dive into the actual equipment, I want to talk about the ships. If you're going for the more relaxed, traditional mining, what you will need is first of all, you will need a ton of hard points. Because there are currently, if we go in here to our outfitting, and we go in and have a look at the new mining tools we're defining here, we now have several different equipments. We have seismic charge launchers, we have subsurface displacement missiles, we have standard mining lasers, and we have abrasion blasters. And if you also want to carry just a few weapons to try and protect yourself, that means that just for this alone, you're going to need at least four hard points, preferably five, so you can have two mining lasers, and then some for weapons. So you need a lot of hard points if you're going to do this visual mining. And you will, of course, also need a lot of, um, of optional internals because you also need a lot of equipment in here. Prospecting, uh, so limpid controllers, both collectors and prospectors. We'll need refineries. We'll need a, surf a detailed surface scanner. We're going to need some... Uh, shield generator is probably a good idea, refineries, and we also want some cargo to actually store our stuff. So a lot of internal compartments is also needed here. If you're going for the more traditional mining, um, what I feel could be a good way to go by it is get something that has like a lot of focus on the internal compartments. The larger ship would often have enough hard points. Um, I've recently been trying it out in a, uh, in a Corvette. Which, uh, which seems to be okay. I like the, uh, it's not as much cargo as a Dakota, um, but it gives you this kind of balance between also having some speed and maneuverability, um, especially the maneuverability is really nice, um, and I'll come back to that later. But having the maneuverability is, is, is I think, a, a bonus, makes me a little bit more efficient in the belt. So going for a bigger ship um, for this is definitely what I would recommend. I will have dedicated ship guides and ship builds later on. That's not what we're going to do today. But if you're going to go core hunting, what is more important here is that you have very good straight line speed and that you have very good maneuverability. You don't really get that much materials. Um, you can maybe collect like, I don't know, 60, 70, maybe 80 uh, tons per hour. Um, so if you can get up, you can easily get up to 200 uh, tons of cargo in a medium ship with all that equipment that we talked about earlier. Which is more than enough that's going to give you at least two hours in the belt, if not more. So and that's, that's plenty before you have to go back. So you don't need that much cargo when you go core hunting because we're going for a, um, a low, uh, low yield, very high um, value materials here. So for this, something like a Python, Crate Mic 2, I prefer the Cutter because that maneuverability and straight line speed is just amazing. The fact that I can boost up to 600 meters a second, uh, even with an almost full cargo hold, 
means that I can just scan the build a lot quicker. Because what you do when you core hunt is you basically just running through the build as quickly as you can, looking for asteroid that lights up with the that has these core deposits in it. And when you find one, you dive down on it, rip it to pieces, take the goodies inside, and then you boost on towards the next one. So here, speed and maneuverability is really, really important. It's also nice to have a smaller ship because when you crack an asteroid open, if you have a large ship or a larger ship, it's difficult to get that thing in to in between the fragments and can easily maneuver in there. Um, the cutter or the cutter, the uh, the clipper is a little bit on the um, little bit on on the large side maybe, but overall I think it's a very good uh, very good ship for it. So that was about the ships. I said dedicated ship guides are gonna come later on. So now we're gonna dive into the equipment and what it is. Now, if we go again here and we have a look at our mining tools, and we start, of course, still have the standard mining lasers. They still work exactly the same as before. You prospect it, it shows some fragments, you fire the mining laser, fragments come out, collect them. So you don't fire at well, basically any spot um, on the asteroid. But with the 3.3 patch, we also have these deposits. Sometimes you would see surface deposits. These are chunks that are lodged on the um, surface of the asteroids. And you can take these abrasion blasters, come and fix the turret, and you can shoot those fragments off. These fragments would often have a higher percentage of the materials than other um, normally mined fragments. So let's say you could get a, a if you mine off an asteroid, you would get, let's say, 10% painite per, per fragment. So we need 10 fragments to get one ton of painite. These fragments can have a lot higher, maybe all the way up to almost 100% painite. Uh, I haven't seen that high, but at least up in the 80s I've seen. Um, so you can get a lot higher percentage of the surface uh, deposits than you could of the other. But of course, they are more scarce and harder to find. But that's what the ablation blasters is good for. Then we have subsurface deposits. These are basically like channels into the asteroid or the deposits right below the surface. And you can fire these um, displacement missiles into the cracks, and there's a small mini game, and then it spurs out the fragments, and you can get multiple fragments uh, out of each subsurface deposits. Um, and then finally, of course, we have the seismic charge launcher. This only comes in a um, in a medium size, as far as I know, fixed and turret as well. And these are for core deposits. You will see fissures in, in the asteroids, which is basically a cracks that goes all the way through the asteroid. You fire warheads into these cracks, and if you balance the power of your warheads correctly, um, all about that in the later video, you're going to be able to crack the asteroid open and get access to what's inside. And I should say, when you do that, not only will a lot of fragments, of course, be put out into space, but you will also, on the inside of the asteroid, see surface deposits, because that's now a new surface. So that means if you're going to go core hunting, you will need both the seismic charge launcher and you will also need an ablation blasters. I, if you're going to go core hunting, you don't need normal mine lasers, you don't need subsurface, but you will need one abrasion blaster and you'll need one seismic charge launcher. And that's pretty much it. If you're going with the more traditional and, and slower, not as profitable mining, but more relaxed, then I would recommend you bring all the different uh, tools, at least one of each, uh, preferably two lasers. And just to make sure that you have all the tools you need when you come across something so you can get the, get as much out of it as possible. Other than that, dependent on, on what type of mining you do, I would also recommend that you in here in utilities, um, you go for a pulse wave scanner, a pulse wave analyzer. These send out a pulse and they show you where all these deposits are. So asteroid that contains surface, subsurface or core deposits will light up in the asteroid field, making them easier to spot for you. This is vital when it comes to core hunting, because that's pretty much all we do. We look for those core deposits. So this is a must if you're going to go core hunting. It's not as important if you're going to go uh, normal mining, but I would still recommend you take one. Um, when you're going to go core hunting, having as much range as you possibly can. We can see if we get the pulse wave scanner. The A rate have a range of 24 kilometers, and if you go down to the E rate, you only get 12 kilometers, so half the range. Um, so I would definitely recommend that if you're going to go uh, core hunting and hunting for mother loads, you need a as big pulse wave scanner and you could, you could possibly manage to get on your ship. If you're going to go with a more traditional slower mining, you can downgrade this because it's not as important um, as it would be otherwise. So you can get a lower one because the power consumption, you can see here 3.2 megawatts is pretty high. And already just going down, we pretty much half our power consumption uh, and only pulls off a few. Uh, kilometers on our range. So I would definitely recommend if you're not going to go core hunting but go traditional mining, then bring a um, 
um, that bring a lower pulse width scanner unless you have the spare um, power overhead to fit an A rated. For the core internals, there's really not a lot to say about this. I, of course, recommend you go for as much jump range as possible. It makes it easier for you to get around to sell your equipment later on or sell your equipment, your, your mind goodies later on. If you're going to go core hunting, I would also highly recommend you do something with your thrusters, dirty drive, drag drives, get some speed out of these, these thrusters, as I said. It's all about getting their speed up, go through the belt as quickly as you can while still having enough cargo um, and also having the maneuverability. Uh, so again, do something with your thrusters and also do something with your with your FSD. When it comes to the optional internals, this is where it begins to get interesting because there is a list of um, modules that is pretty much mandatory. I'm going to list those now. You will need a detailed surface scanner. This is used to scan the rings so you can spot hotspots. The rings will now have these hotspots. If you go into these hotspots, um, but depending on the type of hotspot, some materials will be easier to find. You could go into, let's say, a painite hotspot, then painite would be easy to find. Definitely recommended in either case, depending on which way you uh, type of um, mining you want to do. It doesn't matter. You will need a detailed surface scanner because if you want to go normal mining, you want to find those painite hotspots. And if you want to go core hunting, well, you also want to find hotspots because the hotspot has a higher density of core deposits. So they're easier to find. So regardless of what you do, fit a detailed service scanner, just fit it in the lowest possible slot you have. Now, when it comes to the refinery, this is an interesting one. If you're going to go, you can see here, normally I would recommend a 4A refinery, but you can see I only gone with a 2A here for six bits. That's because I this ship is built for core hunting. And that means there are fewer different materials. So the bins, I should maybe say bins, are how many different materials you can have in your hopper at the same time. I can just quickly show it to you here. If I go over here to my inventory and I go to my refinery, you can see I have, right now, I have six hoppers, but I'm only using five of them. And these are the different materials that I've been hunting. Um, if you're going to go core hunting, there is seldom more than five different materials in a given ring. So having the six, having a 2A is more than enough. Um, however, if you're going to go the traditional mining methods, you will need the 10 bins that you can get on a 4A. And again, then we're also using a bigger ship, so hopefully we have bigger internal compartments available, so it shouldn't be that much of a sacrifice. So you will need a refinery. That is also um, mandatory. So get a detailed service scanner. That's mandatory. Refinery is mandatory. For core hunting, I recommend a 2A. For um, the more um, like traditional mining, I would recommend a 4A. Then you will need a prospecting limpet controller. Get one as small as you can. Um, I A rate mine, so they have, but but basically fit the smallest you can. I think they come in one and three, uh, and then every odd number going up, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, so they come one and three. No, no class twos. So you can. Um, that's why I went with a class three because I've already used my um, my class two for the detailed surface scanner. Um, you really only need one. Uh, especially for core hunting, if you go to traditional mining, it's nice to have at least two, I think. But more than two, I think, is a waste. Um, so if you have more than two, just one collector limpet controller is, uh, or prospecting limpet controller is good enough. Then when it comes to collecting limpet controllers, you're basically going to need as many as you can. Again, for core hunting, you need fewer of them because we are getting fewer fragments that have a higher value, so we don't need that many collectors. If you go with the traditional mining, um, I would say five or six is probably the the minimum I would go for because when we're doing the traditional mining, we're spearing out a lot of fragments. And if we don't have the limpets to keep up, then we're going to be spending a lot of time sitting around waiting for the limpets to come back with, uh, with our fragments. So therefore, if you're going with the traditional mining, try to get five, six or more if you can. Um, I've been playing in some cases all the way up to nine. Uh, I think eight or nine I've been up to on my, uh, on my cutter at some point which was really nice, but get as many as you can without sacrificing too much in your cargo hold. Again, for core hunting, I feel like four is a pretty good uh, pretty good balance here. Getting two A rated, uh, two with three A's is pretty a pretty good balance. You can't go with three if you want to. Two is a little bit on the low side, then you're going to have to spend some time waiting around for the limpets to come back with all your fragments. Um, so I, I think that that's a little bit on the low side, but try to get around, uh, around two, or oh, sorry, a four. Um, that's pretty good for core hunting. Five, six, or above for normal hunting. Other than that, it's pretty much these are the um, the mandatory modules, and of course, cargo holds is obviously mandatory. As much cargo as you can uh, can fit in. I do recommend a shield. 
Um, especially because that the, there seems to be a, I don't know if it's a bug, but at least there is a, uh, a feature where when the lipids come back with fragments, they will now sometimes damage your ship. And if you don't have a shield, that goes straight to your hull. Um, I had, after a mining trip, I ended up with, uh, with around 60% hull left. So I would definitely recommend that you, you take a shield generator with you because these impacts, they do a, a decent amount of damage. So definitely bring a shield generator. And also because, well, if you're flying around the belt, especially when core hunting where you're going so quickly, if you ram into an asteroid, well, that could be the end of it. You lose your ship, you lose your cargo hold. Trust me, I know, it hurts. And therefore, again, bring a, a, bring a shield. You don't need something big. It's just enough to take like bumps and scratches and to survive for long enough to take care of um, of the occasional pirates. That pretty much does it for the um, for the optional internals. Um, if you have spare hard points, um, it's a good idea to bring some weapons. Um, I got with, with beam lasers because then I could use this in a fleet, so I could have um, I could have regeneration sequence on them. But again, if you're low on power, multi cannons is just fine. We really only need the weapons to take care of uh, of NPC pirates if they show up. Um, which they will do if you, for instance, lock out and lock back in or something like that. Then they will come and they will attack you if you still have ore in your cargo. So bring a few weapons. It doesn't have to be big. It's n it's not like they're going to show up in, in, in large ships. It's often smaller, small, maybe medium-sized ships. So you don't need a huge amount of weapons. Just get a little bit. So that was pretty much the, uh, the overview of all the equipment and recommendations for ships. As I said, next time we're going to talk about locations. Then we're going to talk about tips and tricks and then uh, later on I'm then also going to do dedicated build guides for both for my uh, core hunter and my clipper here but also for my corvette which is my going to be my more traditional um, mining ship but all of that is to come uh, so if you want all that information maybe remember to go down and hit that subscribe button and if you like this video give a like down below thanks a lot for watching guys and until next time I will see you guys in space